You're watching the Wellness Hour, news that makes you healthier. I'm Randy Alvarez. Today's topic, replacing missing teeth with dental implants. According to my first guest, nobody should be wearing a loose fitting denture. We've had him on the program before. He is definitely San Diego's go-to person for implant dentistry. With us, we have Dr. Christopher Henninger. Dr. Henninger, welcome back to the program. Good morning, Randy. Always a pleasure. Uh, it, we should mention, look, on my programs, I try to go out of my way to not endorse the guy, but you have literally done an extreme smile makeover on my son, and I could go to anywhere, a anybody, right? Mm -hmm. And my father, you took him as a denture where he goes, I'm fine with my denture, mm -hmm. and now he has a brand new set of teeth that don't come in and out. He says now he could even eat the bones on Thanksgiving. <laughs> he made a video for you. So for people that don't know you and your center, I mean, who's the typical patient that comes in for implants? Um, we have basically three categories of patients who okay. come to us for dental implants. Uh, there are people who have sort of lost faith, faith in the system and just stopped going to the dentist and their teeth are getting to the point where they, they, they've had to do something. Is that what they tell you? Like, Dr. Yeah. Henninger, I just lost faith in the system? Yeah, it's sort of, it's sort of unfortunate. These, these people that we see on a, on a regular basis have, have been through the gum disease treatment, they've been through the root canals, they've been through the crowns, and they've just gotten sick of it and said, I'm not doing this anymore. And then their teeth just get to a point to where they have to do something to replace them. Okay. Um, and, and that's the majority of our patients who, you know, for instance, come from, from, uh, from the wellness hour. Okay. We also see a, a, a lot of denture wearers that, uh, again, um, have traditional dentures that aren't attached to their, their, uh, their mouths in any way. And, you know, we can place anywhere between two and four implants and make a denture where, you know, a lot more happy. Yeah. Um, and then we have implant patients who just need one or two teeth replaced kind of thing. Now, the photos you brought, I mean, they're pretty graphic. These they are. are. And you like them. We, we were in the green room and you're kind of smiling about it. You go, I really like these. Yeah. Some of these. You know, Randy, what, what really interests me about this type of dentistry and what really motivates me to stay in this kind of dentistry, it, it's difficult dentistry, it's time consuming dentistry, and not every dentist has the skill to do this type of dentistry, but what keeps me in it is the, the transformation that we see in our, in our patients. And, and really that's where I get my motivation from, is seeing these patients that are, or these people that are really afraid to smile, um, like quite literally they do this kind of smile that doesn't show any teeth like, yeah. like that okay. or okay. they cover you know with their hand and then seeing them afterwards um, regain their personality um, is really what drives me and motivates me to 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 do this kind of dentistry okay. so yeah when you look at these pictures you you see the teeth but you start remembering the stories behind the patients like what can they do now that they they love doing that they weren't doing when they didn't have you teeth. You say they so. actually change, like they look different, they act different. Yeah, absolutely. And they talk different. We, and we, f we get to form this relationship through this process that, um, you know, I get to see their personalities, like when they first meet me on the consult, very reserved, like I said, not, not smiling, um, not a lot of personality. And then when we get them through the process, you, you sort of get to see that personality that they wanted to let out, but were unwilling to because nice. they were embarrassed of their, of their, of their smile or their loose fitting dentures or, or whatever it may you be. You see that like every day. Yeah. It, 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 this one lady comes to mind that, that really struck me was she, she would go out to eat with her family and sit there and enjoy the social sociability of being out to eat. But when it came to eating, she would actually slip away and go to the car to eat her food, and I mean, I, I think I almost cried when I when wow. I, when she told me that because I mean that's the degree to which it was impacting her life was she would remove herself from the social atmosphere, go do the eating part of the meal, and then come back and socialize because she was wow yeah she was not comfortable eating with you know in front of people so I mean people will do some drastic things to to avoid. Uh, either having to show their smile or eat in public or, or those sort of things. So getting these people on the other side of those problems is really what keeps the burn inside of me to do, do this type of do, dentistry. Do they like the chewing or do they like the way it looks? Like what do they like more? You it's know, all done. Randy, that's the that's really interesting part of this is every patient is different. So finding out what their motivation is, is part of what really interests me about this type of dentistry, because some people it's the smiling and being out in public and being able to take, you know, selfies on their phone again. Some people it's the eating. Um, I, you know, I have a couple of patients that we'll talk about in a minute that, that the eating was like the their, big deal was their world and not being able to do that any anymore really made them miserable. They could care less how they look, but the eating part was, was really important. And, and some people, um, like your dad, it's not the eating or the smiling, it's getting back to whatever their hobby was. So your, your dad was, uh, he's a trumpet player. I know, it was embarrassing. He t <laughs> when I heard that he went to your office after he got his new teeth, 
the dome coming in and out, and was playing the trumpet. I'm sure it was blaring in your dental office. So, so on the, one of the final days of his try-in, okay. I, I will never forget this as long as I live. Um, this is like the last day before we say, okay, we're gonna finish these teeth. It, so it's, it's one of our try-ins. And um, he doesn't care how he looks. He really doesn't, I mean, he likes eating he yeah, too. Yeah. But um, I was like, okay, go get your trumpet so you can try and see if you can hit your high note. Oh boy. And um, he's like, blank stare. He, he, he forgot his trumpet that day. He's like, I'm gonna go home and get it. And he lives like 30 or 40 miles from my office. I'm, yeah, I'm it takes like, about an hour and 15 I'm, minutes. I'm like, Joe, it's gonna take you an hour. I was like, we'll just reschedule, we'll do it again. And, but he was really adamant about being able to try out the teeth. To and, show off in front of you a little And to bit. hit his high note with the teeth, because that's really what mattered, mattered to him. So, and that, uh, so, so it was that day, comes back with the trumpet and yeah. starts playing in the office. Exactly. So I actually had story. We went outside. <laughs> okay, good. I didn't know. Okay, yeah. good. That's we went outside and he played his trumpet and I sat there with him. I think we have a good picture of it. Um, but yeah, seeing him being, he's like, yes, this is going to work. I can do this. And I think he had a lesson that day that he had to go to. Yeah, too. yeah. So he we teaches. We had a discussion about this. Look, he's 84, mm -hmm. but from, uh, from 60 until 80 something, he had a denture. Yeah, so and the he first- he used to say, my denture's fine, my denture's fine. Yeah. But he never smiled. We used to think he was more serious. So Joe is a, is a classic example of somebody who had gotten to a point to where he was like somewhat satisfied, I guess, or he felt like there was nothing else out there for him. So the first case we did for Joe, we, we, did, we, took, we took his teeth out and we did a snap in, snap out den yeah. denture. And um, we, we had, I think it was like 10 years. We were like, Joe, let's, let's do permanent teeth. Let's do permanent teeth. Might have been teeth. about four years. Well, all right. Yeah, he had the snap in, snap out for about four years. Yeah, and so I, we, we were talking about how much life he missed out on yeah. having even the snap in, snap out, which are pretty good compared to what he, having permanent teeth. So, and, and finally at 84, you're right, we got him to do the permanent teeth. And I, th I think he said, he's like, I don't know how I did that for 10, or. So for people that are currently wearing dentures or people that you can't save their teeth and need a full mouth of extractions, when they go to your practice, what's that consult like? And what are their options when it comes to dental implants? So Randy, this is the really exciting part. So when, when we get to the consultation, we're gonna find out sort of what you're dealing with. If you have teeth that aren't savable or a denture that's not really attached and loose and floppy, we're really, um, it's, it's a great opportunity to find out um, whether a snap-in denture, so snap-in, snap-out, we can do that with as little as two implants or even better is gonna be four. We can okay. do that on the top or the bottom. Or if you wanna do permanent teeth. So that's what people want, right? Teeth that don't come out. Yeah, so Ideally. I, these, these permanent teeth that we do on four to six implants, I tell people they're like 90% they're like, like natural teeth. So it really, it really is, um, it is the best thing that we have to offer you. Um, and we've made it affordable by doing the, the, the bridge on, on uh, four to six implants. So yeah, it's, it, it's a great transition because it, you don't miss a beat. You're and like, you could be 90 years old and do this. Doesn't matter. Yeah, I, I have a ton of patients like your dad who are in their late 80s, early 90s. He's 84, he's yeah. could chew whatever he wants. Right, and I tell people, a lot of people ask me, am I too old for this? And I say, you know, my goal here, I don't know how many days you have left or how many years you have left. Um, I don't have a crystal ball, and but my goal is to give you for whatever remaining days or years you have left, um, happiness. And some, for some people, that's just being able to chew and smile and not have to worry about your teeth. So um, again, yes, I, I, I definitely have people that are in their 90s, it's kind of funny to think about them, um, that have gone through the teeth in a day um, procedure and uh, just, it's really changed their whole life. Now, you brought some photos, what are we looking yeah. at? Um, so, so these are some of my, um, some of the patients that I have the most fondest memories uh, about doing, and it's because they have that biggest, the biggest change in their in their personality. The first, the first lady that I I talk about, I like to talk about is uh, is, Su is Susan. Okay. Wow. She she was a, a police officer in San Diego, and she had finally retired from being a police officer. And she she you know, I don't know why uh, what her why was behind stop stopping going to the dentist, but she had given up on the root canals and the gum disease treatment and the crowns. And she just felt like I, I hate doing it. It's time consuming. It hurts. It's not fun. And um, we got to she saw the show and she came in. She's like, I'm retired, you know, from my job. I have time. I want to take care of myself now. And um, you know, she ended up doing permanent teeth. Okay, so you couldn't save those teeth. No, absolutely not. And along with not. that is what, like the bleeding gums, the bad breath, the loose teeth yeah. hurts. And teeth the fact that she was going to work as a police officer every day with teeth like this just baffled me. And um, 
you know, she was a very quiet woman, and she's one of these people. She she comes in. She drives from all the way down from San Diego, San Diego, and um, we can't get her to leave the office now. She's, she's <laughs> she likes being. Let's take a look us. at that after. And so here's her after shot. Oh, wow. it, it is one of our fa it's one of my nice. fa favorite smiles um, that we've done. Uh, I just think it turned out really good, and and just knowing her personality, and when she comes to the office, she's just like she wants to hang out and have coffee with us, and you know that's you know, sort if you're of thing, lucky so. enough to retire. 70s, 80s, whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, going on a cruise, it's all around eating. Yes. If you can, you don't plan your retirement thinking I'm going to wear a denture. Yeah, and so part of her story was so she retired, had more time on her hands, and uh, she will not stopping stop talking about kayaking. So she got into <laughs> kayaking for whatever all reason. Right. Her teeth were stopping her from doing the hobby that she loves. So they don't like water sports in case the denture falls out. Is that what it you is? You know, she was in teeth, so she didn't have the loose floppy denture. But she, you know, she was just afraid to go out and do the things that she okay. loved because her teeth were so bad. And, and then one day. Yes. So she, um, we removed her teeth um, and placed dental implants and a, f a fixed bridge all in the same day. Nice. And so it takes, it takes some time to plan it, um, but the transformation happens in one day. And that's, that's, again, my favorite part of dentistry is when these people wake up from their procedure um, and they see their new smile for the first time. It's, my, it's, it's the apps. I don't know how dentists don't do this kind of dentistry <laughs> because you don't, you don't get that love out of doing fillings and crowns okay. and cleanings and stuff. People don't, you know, get out of the chair. And I mean, she cried. And I mean, how, how moving is that to see a 70 year old woman cry over the way she looks? And I mean, you, you know, her smile meant something to her when, when that happened. So it, it, and, uh, and people are driving distant they, from Yuma because the, the program airs in Yuma. They're yeah. driving from Yuma. You got the famous guy from uh, the mailman from Cheers. He drove like two or three oh, hours that's right. to come in. I yeah. saw the photo. Yes. Uh, um, people from Palm Springs drive in, Orange County. Yeah, so, so good for you. We, uh, we do have a, this type of dentistry. Like I said, there's not a lot of dentists who do this type of dentistry. So when we're able to get in touch with, the, with these type of people, um, you know, a lot of my, my patients, they come from, from great distances. I see a lot of people from Yuma, a lot of people from Orange County. And then, uh, you know, we're in North County, San Diego. But, I mean, we have people seeing us on a regular basis that come from Chula Vista and, you know, South County, San Diego. So, um, and again, that's just, it's a testament to, I, I think, the transformation that they've been through. And you're um, the, probably one of the single uh, busiest implant centers in San Diego. Yeah, I've gotten to the point where that's pretty much all I do is implant dentistry now. Um, okay. You know, I started off doing general dentistry, um, but the, the, the bulk of my time is spent doing, you know, these kind of transformations. So, um, and again, it's, it, it's what makes me happy personally, being able to see people, um, you know, their outlook on life change is, is really important to me. And, and, um, and um, Sharon, she was an older patient, so she was 70, but not all of our patients are, um, you know, your prototypical retiree. Um, some, the next guy I'd like to talk Let's about, take a look. Um, this gentleman, he is actually my age and, um, he, he is not living a normal, 23 years old. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, uh, we, we actually, almost, oh my goodness. Yeah. We almost share a birthday and, um, he, you know, he doesn't have a job. Um, he lives by himself. Um, he, he's, he's a very introverted person and I just, I feel like I felt like the guy, I really felt for the guy because I felt like he was missing out on life. And, um, and it's because of his teeth. So he's a, he's a cleft patient. So he's had a cleft lip and palate and he was born that way. And I think the reason why his teeth ended up the way they ended up is because he was so fearful, um, of people working in his mouth just because of all the surgery that he, yeah. he had had in the past. Um, and so we recently finished his smile. So his, his case was, it was, it was especially complex because of the cleft lip and palate, but we were able to remove his teeth and give him a new set of uh, fixed teeth in the same day. He did not have to wear a denture. Let's take a look at that. And and he's I mean, he's a really young guy. Oh my goodness. Um, and to see him at the end of this process, um, he kept telling me, I, I, I'm like, did you get a job yet? Did you get a job yet? But like we're while we're during the uh, in the middle of the procedure, and he's like, no, I, I'm just waiting on to get my final teeth. And to see him that day get his final teeth, uh, it, it was really amazing to me because I knew. You know, he was on his way to getting a job and being a product, pr uh, productive member of society. And uh, I was just really happy, happy for him, uh, especially. So he's, he's one of so my So his whole demeanor patients. changes, obviously. Yeah, this guy did not smile. 
And, you know, I... Now he looks like a friendly guy. Exactly. I'm really hoping he's going to shave his facial hair now that he's got the teeth, because I think it would accent his uh, smile even more. But, yeah, just totally different personality. You, he's got the same name, but he's not the same now, person look, anymore. we know that Medicare doesn't cover this. Medicaid for sure doesn't cover this. Even the best dental insurance only covers, like, a few dollars of this. Right. So you were financing a lot. You say people finance this all the time. Right. So you have so, to have decent credit, but is this common? They most of our patients, um, I'll say, are, are of modest means. And uh, again, it's really important to me to help people get access to this type of care because, as you can see, these patients that we're talking about today, they really need it, not only for their health, but for their well being um, as an individual. Um, so, we um, again, we have options in our office okay. to where we can make this work in almost any budget. Okay, okay, good. So we can break it up over time. Of course, we, we offer a discount if you pay up front. Um, and again, we stick to that one fee. Um, do they still get to see you? Absolutely. So You're I do not too busy of a guy nowadays? <laughs> I do these cases from start to finish. Okay. And again, it's something that's, that I feel like is, is, is unique in, in this industry, um, is having people that can, a, a person that can do this from start to finish is unique. Okay, good. So, and yes, I'm not too busy for anybody. <laughs> All right, I, good. I love a good story, so. All right, so a couple more. Yeah. And we're, we're getting short on time, so I'm gonna rush you a little bit on okay. these. Okay, so um, this, this other one, um, I try not to use any of my friends, but this, this, this next one is, is one of my friends. Okay. And she's the sister of um, a girl that um, I went to college with. And so we're, we're very similar age. We, we both have three kids. And what I saw was um, a dentist tell her that she had to have dentures. And I said, please, Lauren, come in. Let me take a look. And so we found a way to do this without doing dentures. She got a new set of permanent teeth on the bottom. And we actually had to restore her upper teeth. So she, we, we got to hold on to those. So you didn't have to pull them all out. We did not have to pull okay. them. Yes. And that's another thing that's really unique about our office is all options are on the table. Some of these implant centers, the only thing they do is dental implants. So they don't fix teeth at all. We also save teeth in our office. Because losing teeth is expensive. Well, and it's a big deal. Um, there, I, I, I jokingly tell my patients that there, there's, there's nothing as good as what God gave you. So if we can save what God gave you, I feel like that's in your best interest. Good. Now, a lot of times it, it's not an option, but in her, her situation, it was an option. So we did a full set of lower teeth. Let's take a look at that. Yeah, so this is her, her final. Wow. And so what I like about her story is not only was this affecting her and the way she, her outlook on life, but she had those three kids. So, you know, I take my kids to the park all the time. We go camping together. It's kind of our new thing. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they go to sports practice and things like that. And with her, she was too embarrassed to take her kids to do those things that normal moms and kids do together. So not only did... Because was, of her teeth, she tells you that. Absolutely. Interesting. She'll be the first to tell you that. Okay. Um, that it not only impacted her life, and it wasn't so much that it was impacting her life, but it was impacting her, uh, impacting her family's life. So I... That young was, person would be wearing a denture. Yeah. She, we, so they told her elsewhere, you need a denture. They wanted to do a denture. And you're friends with... Her, her sister. Her sister. Yeah, and said, you got to go see Dr. Henniger. Yeah. So she sent her over to me. Yeah. And I, I knew her growing up and, and all this thing. And to see this happen to her was, was heartbreaking. That's to a good with, story. Yeah, it good is really you. a good story. Um, so she's one of my favorite cases. And, and this next guy, too, he, he's, another, he's another really big transformation. And, and this guy, wow, he, like did, he did not have any teeth when I met him. And um, he, was, he was actually in prison. And he was recovering from, from alcohol abuse. And he had gotten all those things straight in his life, and which I was really proud of him for. Uh, I mean, um, you know, beating alcohol is a really big thing. And the next thing this guy wanted to do, and it actually was a family member who wanted to do this for him because okay. of the improvements that he made in his life. And so um, they brought him in. I think it was uh, his sister who brought him in and said, what can you do for my brother? He's made such a big turnaround in his life, and he's still struggling with, with eating. So eating was his big thing. Yeah. And so um, we did snap indentures for him, both on top and bottom, and totally different person. Wow. Totally different person. And um, you know, credibility goes up. His level, it's like he almost looks 
more, well, he looks more handsome in the after than he does in the before. Right. For sure. So, so this is a 50-year-old man, wasn't driving, was totally dependent on his sister, and he's driving now, he has a job now. He just comes off as a better person for, and it, all we did was give him some teeth. I mean, he's a better person underneath. And good, good. He, Very he, nice. He's really funny. Another story about him real, real quick. Uh, he's really funny. Um, he always comes up with some sort of funny t-shirt when he comes to the office. Okay. And uh, the last one he wore last week when he was in the office was, my dentist has fillings too. That's <laughs> good. Feelings. That's good. That's good. So he always has some sort of joke. And he, so he's a total jokester now. Um, so it was really uh, So really I don't want to rush you, but we're short on time. And I, and I want to show as many of these photos as we can. Yeah. So what do we have? Um, so, so this is another one of, one of, one of my favorite personalities. Um, she comes to the office um, and, and says, um, I, have, I have a really bad denture. And she's had a really bad denture. I'm like, how long have you been dealing with this denture? She's like, 10 years. I'm like, oh, my goodness. Okay, we, get, we got this. And so, um, and she had really bad gum disease on the bottom. So she had a denture on top and gum disease on the bottom. And I said, you know, the sky's the limit for you. What do you want to do? What, what would be your ideal outcome from this? And she's like, I just want teeth that don't move around. And so we ended up doing snap in and snap out um, for her, both on the top Finger. and the bottom. So she, nice. um, we just, all we did was make a new denture for her that snaps. It's, it's actually attached to her now. It's not loose and floppy. And then we replaced her lower teeth. And we all call her the peacock lady because she lives on a peacock farm in, in Fallbrook. Okay. And um, when she comes to see me every single time, she brings a bag full of the shedded peacock feathers. <laughs> and it's kind of an odd thing That's to good. just That's have laying around. But, uh, and, and my kids love seeing the peacock feathers. Um, so, but, so for um, people that are just tuning in, so at your practice, you know, we're talking about dental implants today, mm -hmm. you offer affordable options. So you can either get a brand new snap in, snap out set of teeth, yeah. more affordable. My father started there. Yes. And then you work with them and said we got to get you in teeth that don't come out and now right. he's got brand new teeth upper yeah. and lower that don't come out and what do they do so my dad just goes in what every six months they get their teeth cleaned and that's it yeah so he co he comes in and we make whatever adjustments we need to to, to his dentures and the implants are cleaned by that um we have two great hygienists in our office okay. um so yeah he he comes to see us twice a year now and um but he's done. Yeah, he's he's pretty much done. Yeah, and the, and the done part is my favorite part, um, because seeing you know like her on a regular basis where she brings me the peacock feathers, um, it's just we we get to sit back and laugh about you know how it was and how it is now and um, it, it's good that you like this. Yeah, it, it is. It's really fun, and she's also really funny. At uh, I believe it was Christmas time, she brought me a present, and it was in a Victoria's Secret bag. And I was like, oh, no, because I knew that I knew this lady had a sort of personality. Yeah. And she's like, I bought something for you and your wife and hands me this Victoria's Secret bag, you know, and everybody's thinking it's some like lingerie, lingerie or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and, but I mean, it was chocolate. So she's just got this good, personality good, that good. goes for miles. And so we open it up and it's chocolate. And it's just a good story that we get we get to share. So she's always playing jokes on me when she comes in. All right. So. Time for a few more. Um, yeah, so the next one again is uh, uh, another patient that was just really struggling with teeth and she's got a lot of dentistry in her mouth and she's just gotten to the point where she, she decided to, I don't want to go to the dentist, but what I have is not good enough for me anymore. And this lady, she's funny because when I was in residency, oh gosh, a long time ago, <laughs> um, we actually worked at the hospital together and uh, she remembered me. I honestly didn't remember her. And she started seeing me on TV and she's like, I know that guy. We worked together at the hospital like a long time ago. And so she came to see me. She and was headed to a denture as well. Yes. Well, no, she was in this, she was just stuck. She didn't want to do anything. Cause she, she was like, uh, um, my friend, Mr. Rogers, he, he, he refused to denture. And so he just sat there with these bad teeth for a long period of time. She was the same way. She refused to have a denture. She'd been told that and said, I, I'm not doing that. And so she had these bad, unhealthy teeth in her mouth for a long period of time. And so we, um, we did fixed upper on her. She was, again, very complicated case because she had a lot of bone loss. Um, very but, nice. But she still had, um, we still found a way to get her permanent teeth. And again, that's a gorgeous smile on somebody who had sort of lost her personality from when I had knew her in the hospital. You know, something I'm picking up on this time that a lot of these people, like when we look at her before, after you said, a, you use the term, a lot of dentistry in her mouth. Yeah. So they're, they're sick of kind of like the patchwork, like the root canal, the, right. another crown, a broken crown, another crown, another partial, another bridge. Yeah, so f how it is for most people who go to the dentist on a regular, pa uh, a regular basis is you come in and so you have a problem, the dentist fixes it and you go on with your life until it happens again and again and again. And you know, some people are fortunate like you to have good teeth and not okay. need a lot of, 
a lot of that, um, but some people are, are, are just stuck in this situation where they need it over and over and over again. And it's kind of sad, like these people don't like, I mean, people don't like going to the dentist. You know, we get it, <laughs> but um, sometimes it's necessary. So dentistry now has evolved to where it's no longer patchwork. You get a permanent set of teeth. It's like right. a third set of teeth. So when you get to this point um, in, in, you know, having no hope, um, we have technology available in our in our office, and like I said, it's all done in one office now. And you do it on the computer, right? I mean, we should. Yeah. And we're really short on time, like a minute and a half left, but everything's planned on the computer up front. Yeah. So what's really nice about these processes is they're really predictable, whereas in the past they were really unpredictable, and that's why it took multiple dentists and okay. you know a lot of different things. But because we're able to rely heavily on technology, um, we're able to do these uh, procedures faster, l less expensive, and you know, without involving as many now, you've providers. said a lot today about life changing and things like that. I got to show this photo. We got to go to this photo. It's my son. He had a cleft lip and palate mm -hmm. and pretty much until he was 24 years old, had no smile. So when we take a look at this smile, that was literally about a month and a half apart. So he goes from just like a regular kid. Now he looks like a man. Now yeah. he's dating, probably going to get married. It's just like all the things that I used to yeah. think everybody was exaggerating about. I just asked but him that, But it's a big I? deal. <laughs> yeah. You getting married yet? Because the confidence changes. Yeah, totally. And so, again, getting to people's motivator and what their story is, is what is really important now, to me. we are completely out of time. But one of the things I wanted to do on this show is, I, I always say, I don't endorse people, but look, mm. because of Google and because of implant dentistry, there's dentists taking weekend courses as we speak. They're learning yeah. implant dentistry right now. And I think now more than ever, experience matters. I mean, we've talked about this, yeah. that, that you know so much more now than you did when I first had you on the show seven or eight years ago, right? Yeah. And there's a huge learning curve. Yeah, so absolutely. I say, at least get a consultation. Yeah. So final message, somebody watching this. So I, They're either wearing a denture or they have really bad teeth. Yeah, my, if you gain one thing from seeing this show today, my, I want you to know that there's hope. There's hope for almost okay. anybody uh, in doing these type of procedures. It's either fear um, of, of not knowing um, or the money that it takes to do this. And both of those things are, are overcomable in my office, I believe. You could start um, small. Start with so, maybe yeah. a snap in, snap out. Absolutely. Finance a little bit of it and then move to a permanent set of teeth. Yeah, so I don't I don't charge for consultations, and okay, so that's good. I always tell people knowing is half the battle, and we know doing something is the other half. Um, but come in and let's find out what might be an option for you. So I really enjoy um, just going over different options that I see for people and really finding out what makes you motivated and what you know what change we can potentially make in your life. So yeah, I offer a no uh, no cost consultation because um, I feel like everybody deserves to know what possibilities are for them. So even if you have gum disease, even if you have bad teeth that are just hanging on by strings in your mouth, threads, yeah. Right. you could always do something. If you're sitting there feeling like you've lost hope that there's anything that we can do for you, you're my, come see me. Okay. Let, let's so take, no more dentures. Let's take a look together. You're yeah. going to clean out dentures in San Diego? That would be no my more goal, dentures? yeah. Okay, good. Dr. Henniger, always a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank I'm you. sure we're going to have you back again and again and again. Mm -hmm. And uh, thanks so much. Then go to your website, look at these photos, mm -hmm. make an appointment. Thank you, Randy. All right. You've been watching the Wellness Hour News that makes you healthier. I'm Randy Alvarez. For now, I wish you good health. Thanks for watching the Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news with your host, Randy Alvarez, the authority on health issues. 